Good afternoon, everyone. Very nice of you to come to Lorraine Diggins Fine Art to see this quite unusual exhibition. This is rather different to most things that I do. And it really starts out with imagination. Imagination is at its most free when you're a child, when you can invent a game and not worry about the consequences. A child's imagination is free like uh, a bird. It's not tethered by responsibility. It's not tethered by gravity. It's not tethered by roadmaps. Paper darts have always symbolized imagination for me. They're a uh, motif that I've been using since first time in 1985. I did a suite of four paintings called Flights of Fancy. This happened quite serendipitously. I'd already painted a number of images that related to flight and images that related to children's games and that kind of uh, vulnerability and innocence. In the next 10 years, I did a dozen paintings during that time amongst many others that had paper darts in them. There's something about the, uh, the purity of the white innocence of the darts, the vulnerability of its transient construction and inevitable deconstruction and the fact that it takes flight, that has made it a, a really adaptable symbol of imagination. And paper darts keep on doing that again and again and again for me. They play all sorts of games and sometimes they represent just simply whimsy. Sometimes they're wistful or melancholy. Sometimes they're a little lost. I was talking to my good friend Jeff Brown. Now I met Jeff Brown because his father, Dr Joseph Brown, in his day the doyon of the Melbourne art world, was my art dealer for a dozen years. Jeff collects cars and he collects art and for some reason, whether it was he or I, I don't know, we started talking about the Gogomobile Dart. One of us said, wouldn't it be funny to do something like the BMW art cars and just play on the pun and put my paper darts onto a Gogomobile dart. When you have seen my paper dart pictures, you may wonder how I go about making that dart look like it flies. Well, I do it the same way as I have made this installation here where you see a flock of darts flying right through the gallery. This is an installation which I've called Slipstream and I've done a number of these things. It originally grew out of the fact that when I want to draw a dart and make it look like it's flying, I used to hang it like a marionette and I'd put a, a spotlight on it so it had the sun shining on it, making the appropriate shadows on the wall and the shadows within the dart itself. I realised that to paint this car and make it work as a fluid thing and have some kind of velocity, I would have to think of the body of the car the same way as I think about an architectural space. And fortunately, this car has a beautiful body. I mean, this is an absolute scaled down classic 60s sports car. It looks more aerodynamic than it really is. In, in those days, they didn't test things in wind tunnels, they tested them in their imagination, and so they're far better looking because that's a nicer way to go. What I did was I actually took the measurements of this car and did firstly full-scale drawings and then I realised my studio wasn't big enough for that. Very large drawings, 60%. And I, rather than hanging the darts like marionettes where I would have to adjust three strings every time I want to move the darts, up and down, sideways, tilt, etc., I created a series of wire poles which I could move darts up and down on and tilt them and swivel them any way I wanted. And I lined them up in front of these side elevation drawings and plan drawings by tilting them on their sides and, and having the darts flying like that and drew them in groups that fitted nicely into the flow of the body of the car. There are 62 darts on the car, not one of them is the same. Uh, I know them so well now because I've made them in a small scale dart which was when I was working out the flocks of darts. I then did full A4 sized darts to do studies of each one of them, which we see around the room. Then I did test panels just to learn to paint in automotive paint. I, I normally paint these days in egg tempera, which is a medium that uh, Botticelli and Giotto used to paint in, where I make my own paint. You can do this, kids, but your mother might not be very happy, nor, or, or your father. And, uh, you grind pigment and you get egg yolk, and the egg yolk holds the coloured pigment, powdered pigment together and that is paint and it might sound like it might go off in a week but the stuff in Egyptian tombs has been there for 4,000 years and looks like it was painted yesterday so it's an absolutely beautiful medium. This is another kettle of fish. This is a very robust medium too. It's made to withstand the weather. First bit of art I've got that you can just hose down if you want to clean it. You don't have to put on conservationist gloves or anything like that. But there were going to be things to learn to actually paint with this because I wanted it so thin that when I finished it with many layers of paint, you couldn't even feel it once it had been clear lacquered over the top. I had some 
plates of aluminium sprayed the way the car was going to be sprayed to my design and that was this lovely cobalt blue down through to the hazy sort of horizon. I wanted it to be like the sky cobalt because it makes ra race horses go faster so I thought it might help the dart. If I hadn't done this haze to the horizon and it was just a blue car, it would look like it had a whole lot of stickers put on it. So I wanted it to really look like they were flying through the sky. Those first four of those test panels were just to test the colour, to get the colour I was imagining done right, because it's not a stock colour that you can give them the, the, the code for. And then I learned to paint in automotive paint, and I had to use a lot of thinners. Now, thinners certainly allow the paint to be more dilute, but because I paint in a lot of layers, they strip what you put down as well. So I had to do a lot of experiments with brushes. I had to do a lot of experiments with technique so that I didn't just destroy what I was doing as, uh, while I was going along. And eventually I got to the stage where I could paint very satisfactorily, in fact, to the point that these test panels became finished paintings. And I've done a few more because I enjoyed doing it so much. And I was ready to paint on the car. And the first dart that I painted on the car, it just seemed, again, totally odd to be graffitiing an automobile. The car had been painted with this lovely fade. It had been given a clear coat of something called two-pack, which is pretty well impregnable and then sanded back. That surface meant that I could paint on the car without damaging the paint underneath. And then that same two-pack was going to be coated over the top of this car. From go to woe, this project has taken almost 15 months. Not unusual for me, there is a, an egg tempera painting in the hallway as you come in called Spartacus, which has the MCG in the background and my son Stephen wearing his Essendon jumper at the end of the laneway about to kick to you. I did that over a three year period. That is a record, I don't want to break it. I wanted to create a, a piece of art that was obviously a professional finished work of art, but also didn't have that gravity and seriousness that you see in a lot of my other work. I wanted this just to be fun. I wanted this to be joy, joyful and jaunty and the kind of car that Noddy would have always dreamed of having. So this is the Gogglemobile Dart, spelled D apostrophe A-R-T.